Are you frustrated with how long it takes to tumble rocks? I'm always looking for ways to shorten up the first stage because that's the stage that takes the longest. So today I'm starting an experiment to determine which size grit is best for the first stage. I've done some reading recently that leads me to believe that maybe what I've always assumed to be true might not actually be true. Based on advice that I read when I first started tumbling, I've always used something like 60-90 in smaller barrels and something a little more coarse like 35-70 in larger barrels. And you might just think that the more coarse the grid is, the more grinding it's going to do. But if you think about that a little bit more, there's a little bit of a problem with that. Uh, I like to think in extremes in situations like this. So imagine your barrel had only like 10 pieces of really big grit, like pea-sized grit. That would probably grind really deeply, but it only touched the rocks in a few spots. But if you had much more grit, like thousands of pieces of much smaller grit, uh, that wouldn't grind quite as deeply, but it hit in so many different spots. There'd be so many places of contact that it would probably do more good than, than really big stuff. But if you keep going in that direction, you had very, very fine grit, like millions of particles of little pieces of grit. Uh, that grit wouldn't dig in very deeply at all and probably wouldn't do much good. Actually, I've tried that. Uh, I tried taking rough rocks, uh, not real rough, like beach rocks, and going right to the polish stage, and it just doesn't work. So the question is, where's the sweet spot? There's another factor I want to consider, and that's barrel size. Larger barrels grind rocks faster than smaller barrels do. That might be because there's more weight of rocks pushing on the rocks below. It's kind of like using sandpaper on wood. If you use a little elbow grease, you'll get the job done faster. So since the big barrels use more elbow grease than the small barrels, I'm going to start this experiment with these six pound barrels. And when I'm done, I'm going to redo it using three pound barrels to see if that makes a difference. Let's take a look at the rocks that I'll be using in this experiment. This is red jasper from India, and this is fancy jasper, which is also from India. Although I got all these rocks from the rock shed. Uh, these are seven on the Mohs scale of mineral hardness, which is pretty typical for most rocks that people tumble. Uh, agates and jaspers are considered some of the best rocks for tumbling, and they're seven on the Mohs scale. I've already tumbled these for a week, and the reason I did that is because when you first get these rocks, and they're, they're all broken like this, these sharp edges can sometimes chip off and leave little flakes behind in the tumbler, and I didn't want that to happen and mess up the results of the experiment. It's impossible to tumble the exact same rocks in each barrel, but I tried my best to make each load as similar as possible. Each barrel has 44 fancy jaspers and 47 red jaspers. The total weight of the rocks in each barrel is very close, and I even weighed each individual rock so that each barrel has rocks that weigh the same amount. So for example, each barrel has a 29 gram fancy jasper, and each barrel has a 28 gram red jasper. The shape of each rock varies, but because each barrel has a lot of rocks in it, I hope that will sort of even out. I'm also going to repeat this experiment three times, mixing up the rocks between trials. The barrels are all the same, and I'll be running them on the same tumbler, so they'll be going at the exact same rotation speed. And I'll be using two cups of water in each barrel, which brings the water level up to just below the top of the rocks. The only difference in each barrel will be the size of the grit. So in this barrel, I'm going to use 120-220 grit. Here I'm going to use 60-90 grit, and in this one I'm going to use 35-70. It's all silicon carbide, and it's all from Kingsley North. So I need to get the same amount of grit in each barrel. Uh, and at first I was just going to put in six tablespoons in each one, which is what I normally do. But then I started thinking about that, and I didn't know if that was the most equal way of doing it. I thought about the airspace in between the smaller grains of grit versus the larger grains of grit. So I weighed a tablespoon of each one, and I found that there was a couple grams difference between each one. So they averaged 22 grams per tablespoon, so I just multiplied that by six for the six tablespoons and I got 132 grams. So I'm gonna put 132 grams in each one, uh, and I think that's gonna be pretty close to my six tablespoons and be as equal as possible. All right, I got them all loaded up, so let's get them rolling. I'm gonna be tumbling for one week at a time. You can make arguments for tumbling for longer or shorter periods of time, but after a week, the grit's usually pretty well used up, and doing them a week at a time allows me to open the barrels in the same day of the week each week, which is just a little bit easier to keep track of. Now that I've got those going, let's talk about what those grit numbers actually mean. Abrasives are sorted by passing them through a screen. The number of holes per inch in that screen is what the grit size is. 
Sometimes it's also referred to as a mesh size because it goes through a screen or a mesh. Uh, and those are actually slightly different, but for our purposes, it really doesn't matter. So let's say you have a square inch with 80 holes on each side. The particles that pass through those holes will be bigger than a square inch that has 220 holes on each side. That's why bigger numbers refer to smaller particles. The more holes you put in a square inch, the smaller the particles will be that pass through those holes. You can buy either graded or ungraded grits. A graded grit, like 80 grit for example, will have particles that are all very close to the same size. But if you get 60-90 grit, which is ungraded, you'll have a range of grit sizes from 60 grit to a slightly smaller 90 grit. For rock tumbling, it really doesn't matter that much, and ungraded grits tend to be cheaper, so those tend to be more popular. The first week's results are in. The 12220 batch lost 8.4% of its mass. Uh, the 6090 rocks lost 9.4%. And over here at the 3570, we lost 9.2%. Uh, unfortunately, you can see there's some little chips that came off of all of these. Uh, I'm sure that some got lost, went through the colander, but I saved whatever I could and I weighed it with the rest of the rocks. Uh, we're going to do this a couple more times, so hopefully there'll be less of that each time. Uh, and it all even out in the end. So I'm going to mix all these up again, weigh them all, make sure all the batches are as close as possible, and start them again. The second week's done, and you can see we still got some little chips coming off of these. Not maybe quite as many as last time, but uh, still a significant amount. Uh, I'm still weighing them with the rest of the rocks, and I'm weighing all these rocks dry. I don't think I mentioned that before, so they're they're weighed dry before and after. So this week, uh, the 12220 batch uh, lost 8.7% of its mass, the 6090 lost 9.1%, and the 3570 lost 9%. I'm surprised both times the 6090s come out ahead. I thought maybe last week was a fluke. I'm also surprised how close these two are. Um, it really doesn't seem like it makes a whole lot of difference. Uh, the 12220 is definitely different, but these are really close. So I'm going to throw these all back in for one more week. This week the 12220 batch lost 8% of its mass. The 6090 batch lost 8.7%, and the 3570 came out ahead this time at 8.8%. So if you put the data together for all three batches, uh, the 12220 came out the worst at 8.4%, the 6090 came out the best at 9.1%, and the 3570 came out right close behind at 9%. Uh, so if you would have asked me before, uh, I would have thought that the 3570 would come out ahead. I thought more coarse grit would definitely work better, in, especially in the bigger barrels. Uh, but it looks like this actually came out ahead, but these two are really close. So I really don't think it matters too much if you use 6090 grit or something more coarse like 3570. Just don't use the finer grits in the big barrels at least. Uh, we still got the, the small barrels to check on, so uh, that'll be coming up here soon. Before I get those smaller barrels started, I want to tell you about one other thing that I noticed when doing this experiment. Each week when I filled the barrel up with rocks, I put a little bit more in than the week before. I didn't do that on purpose, it's just that with these really short barrels, it's hard to judge when they're exactly three quarters full. So that's not critical, so I'm just guessing at about three quarters full, and just by accident, they're a little more full each week. So what I noticed is, that the more full the barrel was, the smaller percentage of mass was lost. Uh, so to keep things simple, I want to show you some data, and I'm going to show you from the 6090 barrel instead of doing all three barrels. So as you can see from the data, as the amount of rock in the barrel increases, the percent of mass lost decreases. 
But if you think about that a little bit, uh, there's, there's, there's more rock in the barrel uh, later and a smaller percent, but it's a smaller percent of a bigger number. Uh, so it comes out, so the actual number of grams lost is just about the same. It's not exactly the same, but it's really close. So you can think of it as if you put more rocks in, that grinding gets spread out over all the rocks more. And if you put fewer rocks in, the grinding is concentrated on those rocks. So I don't know if that's valuable information, but I thought it was kind of interesting, so I thought I'd tell you about it. Now that we know what's best for the big barrels, let's check it with these smaller three pound barrels. I'm gonna use the exact same procedure as before, except with smaller barrels. So I'm just gonna run all three trials and then let you know what the results are at the end. So I'm gonna get these on the tumbler and I'll see you in three weeks. I just emptied the three barrels for the third time and weighed all the rocks. So the small barrel portion of this experiment is now done. But before we get to the results, I wanted to thank Adam Five and Saz from the Rock Tumbling Hobby Forums and also Hobart King for their research on this topic. I'll leave links to their work in the description of the video so you can uh, check that out if you'd like. So here's what I found out about the smaller barrels. Uh, first off, in each barrel, I put in one cup of water and 66 grams of grit, which is about the same thing as three tablespoons. And in the first week, the 6090 grit came out quite a bit ahead of the other two, but then in the next two weeks, the 6090 and the 3570 were pretty close to the same. So when you put all the data together, the 6090 grit did seem to be the best for the small barrels, uh, but it's not that much better than the 3570. So I don't think it makes that much difference whether you're using large barrels or small barrels, whether you use 6090 or something a little more coarse like 3570. I would just get whatever's the cheapest and use that. Uh, I would avoid using the 12220 grit in the first stage. I'd say that for the second stage, that just didn't seem to grind as well for me. So I'm going to try my best to put all the raw data in the description of this video. I can't put tables in there, it's just a plain text, so it's going to be a little hard to keep it organized, but I'll do my best so you can check there if you want to see the raw data. And also I'm going to put a link to other experiments that I've done here. Uh, I've, I've done experiments on using sand for grit instead of silicon carbide. Uh, I did an experiment on the amount of grit to use in a barrel. Uh, I did one where I tumbled rocks for a, a complete year. I, put, I filled two barrels with rocks, I put them on the tumbler, and I left them there for a whole year without opening them up. But one had aluminum oxide and the other had silicon carbide in it, and there was quite a difference in the results between the two. So I think you can learn something about those different grits uh, from that experiment. And finally, I did an experiment on how much electricity various tumblers use. So I have quite a few tumblers. I tested them all so you can get an idea of how much it's going to cost you to run some tumblers. So I'll put that playlist here. So click on that and I'll see you over there.